Hi, I'm Reverend Lynn Marshall with our Concord Unitarian Universalist Church uh, story for this week. It's called It Takes a Village and it was written by Jane Cowan Fletcher. And this story is set in Africa. It's uh, you may recognize it's a story where we'll end up um, in a farmer's market. So here we go. They're just waking up. They're getting ready, taking a bath, cleaning the house. Looks like there's some goats nearby. The sun was just beginning to climb into the sky, but the villagers had been up for hours. It was market day. Yemi, Mama said, you must take care of your little brother today while we're at the market. I will be too busy selling our mangoes. Have you ever bought mangoes at probably the supermarket? We can't really grow them in New Hampshire, but in Benin where this family lives, they can grow them. Come, Koku, Yemi said. I will watch you today all by myself. All by yourself, Mama asked and smiled at what Yemi said. Mama knew better. Mama picked up their mangoes. Yemi picked up Koku. She felt very grown up as she walked out of the family compound beside Mama. African women very often are super good at balancing. They use their heads to carry things and they can balance big loads on their heads. They joined the stream of people walking into the village. People came from all around to sell their goods and buy whatever they needed. Market day was also a time for visiting. And if you've ever gone to the farmer's market and conquered with your parents. Maybe it's happened to you where your parents stop and they talk and talk. The greetings started the moment they stepped onto the paths into town. Hello, how are you? How is your family? And so they're all walking down to the farmer's market. Yemi helped Mama set out their mangoes. One of the other fruit vendors said, Yemi is a big girl now. She's a lot of help to you. Yes, said Mama. She is going to watch Koku for me today. All by myself, Yemi added. All by yourself? Yay, gay, the women marveled. They smiled and nodded, but they knew better too. So what do you think if she's not gonna do it all by herself, really, what will happen? When the mangoes were all in neat piles, Yemi asked if she and Koku could take a look around the market. Mama said, yes, but don't be gone too long. Yemi had not walked very far when Koku became restless. He must be hungry, she said. She set him down for just one minute so she could buy some peanuts and Koku wandered off. Cho. Yemi cried when she turned around and discovered Koku was gone. She put the peanuts in her pocket and she hurried off to find him. Where could he have gone? She said. As Yemi searched for him, she began to worry. Koku must be hungry. But he was not. Koku must be thirsty, but he was not. Koku must be frightened, but he was not. Koku must be hot, but he was not. 
Goku must be tired. But he was not. Finally, after searching for him everywhere, Yemi stopped and cried aloud, Goku must be lost. But he was not. Just across the path from where Yemi stood, Koku was waking up. Is this your, your Koku? The mat vendor asked. Yes, cried Yemi as she scooped up her brother. Thank you so much for taking care of him, Yemi said to the mat vendor. Oh, he chuckled. I was not the only one. He pointed to where Koku had come from. Yemi thanked him again and headed off in that direction. She said thank you again and again and again and again. We've been gone a long time, Koku, Yemi said. Mama must be worried but she was not. Mama knew better. As my mama told me and her mama told her, I will tell you. You weren't alone today, Yemi. We don't raise our children by ourselves. It takes a village to raise a child. And that is an expression, um, a proverb from Africa that you can think about this month as we begin our month of exploring the theme of beloved community. Who are the people besides your parents who help take care of you and who make sure that you are, uh, that you have food to eat, that you have water to drink, that you're interested, that you get to rest when you need to. Um, so give that some thought and I'll be back with another story soon. Goodbye.